Okay, hey everyone. Life's been crazy for me, and I'm not sure who to turn to. So here I am, hoping some internet strangers will offer some wisdom. Long story short, my grandfather passed away not long ago, and we've just found out that he's left a good amount of money for his children and grandchildren. Of course, losing him hits us hard. He was a rock in our family, and I was really close to him ever since I was a kid. The rest of the family really looked up to him, and when he passed, it felt like the ground beneath us shifted. But then it was a nice surprise that he left behind such a nice chunk of change for his kids and grandkids. With just mom, aunt, two cousins, and me in the picture, that meant each of us was looking at around 170000 After taxes, of course. Well, it was a bittersweet revelation, and the money was welcome, and it was going to change our lives. Now, here's where it gets really complicated. I actually have a sister, whom I vaguely remembered from childhood. Her relationship with me, uh, with my family, has always been weird, like a big question mark that nobody wanted to talk about. She had left home many years ago to follow the, quote, love of her life, who was a middle-aged man who had promised to provide for her. At least that was what my parents told me. I was only six when it happened, and my sister was 15. We weren't close in any way, partly because of the age gap. My mom always wanted two children, but she had some maternity problems, and that's why it took them so long to have me. And that's why it hurt them so badly when she left, too. My parents are, understandably, still sad about it. The first few years after she left home, both of my parents were having an extremely hard time. They were close to getting a divorce because of how triggering it was to talk to each other. Well, I'll admit that it affected me negatively, too, and I guess I've always had resentment for my sister. I hated that she left, and then I had to deal with the mess that she created. Of course, as time went by and I got older, that feeling naturally faded. But that's to say, I find it really hard to accept what happened next. So, just after a few weeks after the passing of Grandpa, Emma shows up out of the blue, and I have not seen her in, what, a decade? She just showed up at the doorstep of our home with her disabled husband, claiming they deserve a share of our inheritance, too. Obviously, I'm skeptical about her sudden reappearance, and I mean, where has she been all this time? And why pop up now, just when there's money on the table? I almost turned her away, thinking she's just a sketchy scammer, until she correctly named the whole family along with our birth dates and family memories. It was such irony that she still remembered it all. I let her in the house, but I found it extremely difficult to be friendly, especially when she seemed to only care about the money. Legally, she's entitled to a portion of our grandpa's assets, and she's his blood relative. But I can't just hand it over without further investigation. So I did what I had to do. I stalled. I told her that we still had heaps of paperwork to wade through, and that I'd give her a shout once everything was sorted. You know, it took us time. Now, a little bit of context for what happened after that. I'm in my early 20s, and I just graduated from college, so I know that I don't have a lot of experience judging people's intentions. I'm also quite a straightforward person, so when someone hurts me, I generally just cut them off. I don't like maintaining the smallest interaction with someone who has wronged me, so I find it really, really hard to be in contact with my sister. Another thing is that I'm now living with my fiancé in a very cozy apartment. He's a mental health counselor, and we've been engaged for a year now, planning our dream wedding, and that's to say I'm not in the best state of mind to deal with complicated family drama. The wedding planning process is exhausting, as many of you might know, so when I said that I completely lost it after what happened, please try to be kind and understanding. Okay, so, things took a bizarre turn when my fiancé, let's call him Kyle, realizes he recognizes Emma from a photo of one of his client's phone screens. He's a mental health counselor, and, you know, uh, part of his job is to lead therapy sessions for ex-offenders. Obviously, Kyle did not ask his patient who the woman on his lock screen was, but he remembered the face uh, specifically because of how weirded out the guy was when he realized Kyle must have seen the screen. He was hasty, to say the least, and the next time Kyle saw him, he noticed that the lock screen was changed. At that point, Kyle just assumed that the guy was embarrassed or something. Now, it made sense why he wanted to hide. You know, maybe because he's Emma's boyfriend and he knows something I don't know. Funnily enough, he isn't disabled like Emma's husband. He's a former convict who's been in jail for drug-related offenses. And in fact, he was seeing my husband to talk about his addiction and commitment issues. 
Emma's husband is the disabled man whom we were introduced to the day Emma came back into our lives. He was very mild, almost too mild, and he just seemed to uh, be so sleepy all the time. He rarely engaged in any real conversations, and Emma tried to cover it up and explain to us that he had social anxiety. But I don't buy it. I have a friend who actually has that, and while I understand that people could have two different ways of coping with their anxiety, something about him just creeped me out. It really felt like they were liars, and I was having that thought even before I knew about this whole lock screen ordeal. So, here's where I'm not very proud of myself. I got so mad that I told my fiancé that I was going to call Emma and teach her a lesson. He tried to stop me, but I resisted. He grabbed my phone while trying to explain to me why that was such a hasty decision when I was trying to take it back and I accidentally hit him in the face. I was so mad. I didn't even apologize, and in fact, I was mad at him for siding with her. I packed up my stuff and went to a hotel, and it's been only a day, and I just feel like a mess. I'm sorry if this feels like a whiny post or something, but I feel absolutely terrible about everything, and I don't know if I'm even capable of making good decisions now. I've turned off my phone ever since I moved out, and I don't have a lot of friends. My closest ones are not living in the same city as I do, and I'm not ready to talk to my fiancé either. What should I do? Was I wrong to react the way I did? I feel so bad for doing that to my fiancé, and I even feel bad about lying to my older sister. I honestly don't know how I got into this mess in the first place. Comment number one from the original post says, OP, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I think that you might need professional help. I mean, this is the nicest, kindest way possible, so don't take it the wrong way. It sounded like your sister's disappearance took a huge toll on you. You don't really sound okay. I really hope that you call your fiancé, your parents, and your friends immediately. They must be so worried about you. Comment number two. This is very frustrating. Why are you doing this to yourself and your family? I find it ironic that you're running away uh, the same way your sister did. Please stop. Go back to your family. I mean, sorry if this sounds harsh, but I feel like someone needs to give you something straight up. You have a whole future ahead of you. A family, a huge inheritance, a career. I mean, don't ruin it for yourself. Update number one. Hey, everyone. Thank you for your responses. I've realized that I ended the original post in a very concerning state. So thank you to any of those who were genuinely worried for my safety. I'm much better now. I know it's only been less than two weeks, but I feel like I need to give everybody an update. Let me let you know that I'm safe, at least. So, I realized that I was having a panic attack, and I used to have those a lot in middle school. And we figured it was because of my sister's sudden disappearance. We were going through a lot of stress for a few years, and our parents reported her missing to the police. But there was not much that they could do. They didn't find her anywhere, and they couldn't say that it was a kidnapping because she left a letter explaining why she was leaving. She accused our parents of mistreating and abusing her. At one point, my parents were the main suspects, and our neighbors were passing around rumors. The worst ones were too bad for me to even write down here, you know. I wanted to move because I had no friends left, but my parents wanted to stay. They were still holding out hope that their daughter would return someday, and... At one point, I resented my parents for having done that to me. We went to a family counseling together, and things did better for, you know, after a few years. But still, it was a terrible time. With Emma's reappearance, it was understandable that I was distraught. My parents are not doing any better. They were really shocked when I told them about Emma's visit to my home. They broke down, asking me to give them her phone number so they could call her themselves. And I gave it to them in the a fight with... Kyle happened after that. So for two days, I didn't even know what happened to my family. I guess part of me felt like I was being abandoned again because my parents turned to my sister. And of course, that was just the pain and the memories speaking. So on the morning of the third day, I realized that I was doing, uh, you know, to Kyle the exact same thing that Emma was doing to our parents. Someone up here pointed it out, and I must admit it was hard to read that comment. But it's true. I turned on my phone, and Kyle called me over a thousand times, hundreds of messages, from him, my parents, and my closest friends combined. Oh, I'm very embarrassed. I called Kyle, and he went to pick me up, and he was a little bandage on his chin, where I accidentally hit him the other day. And as soon as I saw that, I burst into tears. It's just been a really hard time for us. Anywho, 
about my parents, they were deeply disappointed uh, because Emma would not pick up the phone. She only talked to me, assuming I had news about the inheritance, and I had to call her and then give my phone to my parents so they could talk to her. She was cold. She asked my parents to hurry up with the paperwork, and my mom was in tears. My father looked the most heartbroken I'd ever seen him. I think it was more painful to him than to realize that his 30-something-year-old daughter is still the same teenage girl who left home for a mere stranger. It was no mistake, because she was young, it's just... It's just who she is. So, this is when they decided to reveal something to me. When Emma was in elementary school, she displayed some questionable behavior. She would get into fights and then get away with it by saying all the right things to the teacher. They later found out that she was stealing candy from this one kid and putting them in another one's bag, framing the other kid for the act, and, well... There wasn't CCTV in the classrooms back then, but apparently the teacher accidentally caught the wind of it. Uh, she was in the act. Throughout her school years, her behavior just got worse and worse, and she had to change schools five times. At first, she was always excellent at making new friends. Blending in, being the teacher's pet, I mean, you name it. The things just happen, and peoples accused her of starting fights, stealing smoking, and blaming other students for her acts. When she left home, my parents were actually not that surprised. Maybe that was part of the reason why they were suspecting it. It almost was like they saw what was coming. So, we've been trying to sort things out with her about the inheritance. There's a few things that I can't tell you just yet, but I just wanted to say that I appreciate anyone who commented. I'll write an update hopefully soon when things start to settle down. Update Number two. So, some things happened in the last few weeks, and long story short, Emma's no longer family, at least not technically anymore. So, this is what happened. Despite my reluctance, Emma persisted in demanding her share of the inheritance. She called me many times and gave me a deadline, threatening to take things further if I did not give her the money by this ridiculous date. I think that she might have an idea that I was bluffing. I mean, it makes sense. I guess she also knew that in my heart of hearts... She has no longer been family for a very, very long time. But I didn't get why she was in such a rush. She sounded like I'd, uh, if I didn't give the money to her right away, she was going to be in some sort of serious trouble. Maybe it's just her way of guilt tripping me, guys. I am not really sure. So, here's where things got much worse really fast. She went to my house and asked me to hand over my entire apartment if I could not give her the money. She's obviously ridiculous, and I refuse to do so. My fiancé had to step outside and physically stop her from barging into our home. Some neighbors had to call management because of the noise, and I called the police on her. But they couldn't do much. I mean, she left as soon as she saw them arriving, so it's not like there was anything for them to do. But I was anxious because I knew that she could do this again. I couldn't even file a restraining order, and the most I could do was complain. Now, I've repeatedly refused to hand over the apartment. I bought that apartment with my fiancé, and so half of it was not even mine. Emma got really, really mad, and she went as far as causing a scene at my workplace. For your information, I just started out as a consulting company, and I had just a month left before completing my trial period. I was doing a great job, and my manager liked me a lot. I thought I was really close to earning a full-time position, but my sister's appearance ruined it all. So, you know, management decided not to renew my contract, possibly because they didn't want to deal with the drama. Frustrated and angry, I declared that Emma was no longer part of our family. I did the paperwork and everything, and we're actually going to disown her. I'm also filing for a restraining order and waiting for the official result. This has been hard, but at some point something just broke inside. I couldn't take it anymore. She's never been my sister, and she never will be. I just really want to get this over and focus on my wedding. See, I've realized, uh, and just, I'm relying on my fiancé to take care of it. And I keep feeling like I'm missing out on things, plus I know that he would have to take phone calls and reply to messages while he's at work. So, I would just like to shoulder some of the responsibilities. Things must have been hard on him, too, and I hope that this whole mess will come to an end soon. And I'll write another update when it does, so thank you again, everybody, for your support. Updates number three. Hey guys, that's me. I'm back with another update. So, 
Um, I spoke too soon. It's not over yet. In fact, it's just getting worse and worse. So Emma was mad when she found out she was going to be disowned. I mean, really mad. I blocked her number, obviously, and did not plan to talk to her again. So the next week, when I was double-checking our venue, I realized that our reservations have been canceled and I freaked out. I was literally on the verge of having another panic attack. We booked months ahead, so I didn't know what happened or what to do to fix it. The venue manager said my maid of honor phoned in to cancel it, so I called up the maid of honor and she didn't even have the venue's number. She drove all the way to my apartment, and yeah, she lives three hours away, and we spent the whole afternoon trying to figure out what happened, and we did. It was all Emma. What she did was to go to the venue and claim to be my maid of honor. We still share the same last name, so it made sense why she would be the maid of honor, I guess. She even had someone faking me on the phone with her, as if I was changing my mind and she was just doing what she was told. She asked the staff to change the contact number and the email address to hers so that she could take over the entire organization. The worst part is that she didn't just do this to the wedding venue, she also tricked the dress shop. In the same way, canceling all of the bookings. It cost thousands of dollars to rebook them, so I'm not sure what to really do. Plus, we've lost the deposits on all of it, and they were non-refundable, so the moment she canceled, we lost it. Suddenly, our dream wedding is in jeopardy due to the financial strain caused by Emma's actions. So, my maid of honor and I were calling all the places all over and over again to warn them that my sister might be contacting them. They were all flabbergasted at what happened to us, and we also contacted the venue and the dress shop to explain to them the situation and ask them to keep our booking. Or at least give the refund. By the time we figured things out, it was too late. The venue was already given to another couple on the waiting list, and the dress shop said that they would need to verify our story, which is completely understandable, but still very anxiety-inducing. Plus, even if we have the dresses planned, what are we going to do without the venue? It's been nothing but a total mess. Ugh. I'm not sure what's the best course of action, but I know I'm going to do something. I mean, any advice? The only silver lighting is that my family's been more bonded than ever. Uh, it felt like my parents could finally let go of the daughter that they were hoping for, having realized that she had always been this way. I don't know if she's a psychopath, but that doesn't matter anymore. It's too late for any remedy now. My fiancé and I have been going strong too, and he's been such a patient, loving partner. He takes care of me and makes sure that I feel supported and appreciated all the time. I've always known that I've got a good one, but this further reminded me of how blessed I really am. After all, a ruined wedding is not going to ruin a marriage, right? Update number four. Wow. I'm back. Things have picked themselves up lately, and a lot has happened, and I just want to quickly update before going back to work. Yes, you read that right, I have a job, but more on that later. So I was determined not to let Emma get away with ruining the wedding. We were going to get to the bottom of how she found out about the arrangements, and we never mentioned anything in front of her, and she even had a few details that I didn't have. So, the only conclusion that made sense was that somehow she managed to eavesdrop on my fiancé. During that very hectic time, he was taking calls in his office all the time, and he was in front of patients, of course, but he was trying to juggle many tasks at once. Well... So, we had specialists go to Kyle's office to figure out what was going on, and we discovered that a recording device was planted in Kyle's office, right under the patient's couch, so it made sense that someone was gathering the information they wanted. That's probably how she got all the information about our lives, including the wedding bookings and the inheritance. I immediately linked it to the patient of mine. He stopped coming around a while ago probably because he had successfully planted the recording so there was no need to pay my fiancé a visit anymore. I know this all sounds really crazy, but I feel like I only had clarity very recently. I just know exactly what I have to do to protect myself and my family now. I sued Emma for $500,000 in damages. We hired good lawyers and everything, and there's a literal mountain of evidence, so... I'm not scared. We even got the wedding venue and organizers to provide their call histories to aid our arguments. And I don't know what they were thinking, risking their lives just to make money and take it from my late grandpa. Emma was obviously mad. She threatened to sue me for having lied to her about her share of the inheritance. But I don't care anymore. 
this is just too tiring, and I understand why my parents might find it difficult standing up against her. So I just have to take this upon myself. Kyle's supportive, too, so that's the update that I came here to deliver. I hope I'll write back soon with good news, and yes, I got accepted by a new agency. I was pretty excited about that, too. Something for me to look forward to during this difficult time. Final updates. It's been eight months and I'm here for my fifth update. Things have sorted to wrap them up. This is probably going to be it and I appreciate the support. So, about the lawsuit. It was pretty complicated and exhausting, so I'm just going to give you the short rundown. It turns out that Emma was indeed eligible for the inheritance because Grandpa neglected to clarify that she was not considered family. He loved her, but was the most concerned adult about her. He once said to Mother that he didn't want her around his home, and they had a huge fight about it, and it was really tiring. Anyways, guys, the point is, I knew he would not have wanted to include her. And here's the thing, though, Emma didn't have enough proof that I was lying about the paperwork. She didn't know that her family lawyer is really close to our grandpa, and he knew that our grandpa would not want us to lose the case. So our lawyer helped us provide all the paperwork to back us up. Emma's claims were quickly dismissed. The problem with Emma was that she got into trouble with many people. The man she brought to see us was actually on sedatives. She was trying to win over the affection by showing up with a disabled stranger. We found him on the streets. He's homeless and helped him sue Emma too. And of course we won. Well, the money he won was not much. It was $40,000, but enough to change his life. As for our family, we won the case. In the end, Emma's held accountable for her actions, and it turned out Emma and her husband were in such a hurry because they were on the run. That's right. They were going to cross the border somehow as her husband was on parole in another state. They were both thrown into a jail cell. We cut all contact with Emma and never had to speak to her again. We used the money to organize the wedding perfectly this time. The venue read our story on the news and gave us a slot for free after asking us to mention it to the journalist. I guess that's a fair trade, am I right? Well, about the dress shop. They also offered to change me. Well, they're only going to charge me half the price of my bridesmaid dresses. Our wedding pictures on the news alone were already good enough deal for them. I guess it all worked out after all.